Hello, my name is Sagita and today I will do a Photoshop um, introduction and a short tutorial. So this will this one will focus on image editing. Um, so basically I will show you how to uh, improve the scanner photogra photograph drawing, um, how to make it better for your digital submissions. So at first I will talk through scanning versus uh, taking pictures, uh, some tips on how to take a good photo of a drawing in case you don't have access to a scanner. Um, and then I'll show something uh, about editing photos, so stuff like color correction, um, transforming it, aligning it, uh, editing spots, masks, brushes, that kind of stuff. Um, so, first of all, ideally, if you are available to use a scanner, if, if you have a scanner available to, use, to you to use, I would always suggest using a scanner versus um, a camera to take a picture of a drawing, because um, obviously, first of all, you, you don't distort the uh, the lines or anything just by using a from camera angle, and you do because it lights it up really clearly. You don't get any weird shadows or anything like that, um, and you you will always have uh, almost always have a good quality result when you scan a drawing. However, obviously, in these situations, as we do as we do have now, you might not have a scanner available. You might not be able to go into university uh, to scan it, and you might. Uh, need to just use your phone to take a picture or take, use a camera to take a picture of your drawings, which is fine, um, and I will use this tutorial to show you how to improve what you have uh, with, a cam with a phone camera. Um, another issue might be that your drawing is just simply too large for a scanner. Even though your university provides large format scanners, you might have something that is uh, way too large. The scanners might be out of order and you might not be able to use them. And also scanners are not suitable if your drawings are uh, used, are made using uh, different types of materials, uh, such as uh, if you have used some uh, some glue and some paper on it which is textured, if you have added some more texture with using um, fabrics or other materials, it, it may not scan and it might just break the scanner. Um, and sometimes you might just have a paper, either it's tracing paper or something else that, uh, even though tracing paper normally does scan well, there might be some papers which are just because of transparency and because of other effects, so maybe the scanner has some issues. Um, it has some issues with the glass and, and whatnot, and you just might not be able to scan. Or, in fact, you might be able to scan. However, you might still want to edit your final result just because uh, something doesn't look great. Um, I would also suggest that you do check um, your phones for all kinds of scanning apps because um, I've seen quite a few, and I know there's definitely some of the app store that you can actually use to take a picture um, in sort of like series of multiple pictures and it does allow you to line the corners and line the lines so that your final image is um, is accurate. It's not a 100% uh, safe thing, but uh, you, you have the opportunity, why not explore it, uh, it, might, it might be helpful. And uh, so to take a good picture, there's a couple things you should look out for. So first of all, make sure you light it up. So if you're doing it on uh, on your desk, Use your um, use your desk lamps. Use whatever lamps you have available to light it up. So, y because the lighter the image is, the better the color quality is going to come out. If it's taken uh, in the dark, uh, even Photoshop is, it might not be able to read all the colors properly. So, the same as like when you're taking photos um, with the camera outdoors, the, the more light you get, the better it is. Unless obviously if it's, if it's a direct sunlight, which you also don't want. But in this kind of situation, you just want to if you have multiple. Um, desk lamps, for example, available, put them all together, put them around your drawing, create like a little studio where you, where you light up as much as possible. Um, try and make sure that the background is even in, ser in terms of it being flat and also that it's uh, an even color because then it's just easier for you to crop it out. Um, and if you're taking it uh, with your with your phone, try to light it up in a way that you don't get any shadows on your drawing. Because obviously if you do, you will see that, uh, for example, on this one here, there is there's a shadow where I was holding a phone and taking a picture and it's it's not great because it, it kind of like distracts you from the actual picture uh, of the actual drawing you have made because it just um, uh, there is uh, there is a shadow and uh, try and line it straight so you take a picture from straight up if you need you know s um, s step up on like a, on a chair or something so you can take a picture from straight up uh, so you don't end up with a picture that's massively skewed because um, even though you can edit it in Photoshop and you can straighten it up you might, uh, it, it does sort of like create pixels in an automated way and you might not always get the best results. So the better the initial picture is, the better your 
final result is going to be. And, uh, and yeah, so for, for this exercise, I'll be using this photo, which obviously is not perfect. There's still a bit of shadow. However, it is more straight than this one, for example. And I have used my camera flash, I believe, to eliminate little bits of the shadow. So hopefully that will be good enough. And I will show you how to get from this picture that I've taken to actual to editing it in Photoshop to cut out the the edges that I don't need um, to improve some of the white balance uh, so I, I delete uh, I get rid of some of the background uh, grayness and greenness that I have in there in the shadow here um, then I will bring it into Illustrator and I will actually show you how to image trace it which uh, turns a vector image into uh, sorry which turns a raster image into vector image which you can then afterwards edit, you can change the color, you can add backgrounds, and you can um, use it for any creative um, endeavors you may have. So thank you, and uh, let's see you in Photoshop in the next video.